Hi again everybody, this is Steve from HitItLonger.com and today we're looking at the swing of a young Fred Couples. Um, he swinging in this uh, studio with uh, the tape on the wall so you could see um, you know, the grid line and you could look for motion and everything. What I want to show you today is all the different similarities between young Fred Couples and the Mike Austin swing. It really is phenomenally similar in many ways as you're going to see here. First thing I'd like to do is show you the similarities in pivot going back. What you see here I've got vertical lines drawn from his hip bones and one from his navel. And what you're going to see uh, in this swing that's very similar to the Mike Austin swing is the lateral swinging of the lower spine. Um, what many people refer to as a sway, I just laugh at that, um, because he has one of the best weight shifts uh, in all of golf. Watch how the left hip is going to push back and almost approach as he reaches the top it almost approaches the center line and you can see how his right hip has moved considerably outside the original uh, hip line as his left knee is coming trying to come close to the center line his weight is now really loaded up on the right leg while his head has stayed in the center really similar to Mike Austin. Okay, the second thing I want to show you is the toe drag that he has on the way through, very Austin-esque. There's the original foot position. Let's watch what he does with his toe as he shifts over very assertively. You can see it dragging there into the line, cross the line, replants itself and then turns up as he comes through. This move not only proves that he his weight is completely established on his straightened left leg, but it's also a great way when you're allow your toe to drag around a semicircle around your left foot. It is a great way to relieve uh, stress and pressure off of your lower spine, particularly the L4, L5, and L5, S1 uh, joints. It allows the lower spine to turn at the same rate as the upper spine. So you see that little toe drag. Okay, let's take it back to the top again. We're actually back to the beginning. And let's establish our hip lines again. Okay, we have our hip lines back again. And we have our navel line back again. Now I want you to take a look at the hip motion on the downswing. So you remember how much laterally he traveled back? About uh, it's about four inches that his spine has swung to the right. Now he's going to swing the spine about 12 inches to the right, and it's going to end up with this center of mass around his navel area. Is going to wind up right on the yellow line while his right hip is coming right into the center line. What's really neat to see in this frame right here is the angle. You can see that his navel is right on the top of this yellow line where his hip started. I'm going to just draw it from there to a swing circle center and then down to vertical. And what's really neat here is that his swing circle center is right on 
the center line that he started on and he is in approximately a 30 degree angle just seems to be a very common measurement among classic swingers is this 30 degree measurement um, that the spine is tilted so the navel is over the left big toe while the swing circle center the seventh cervical vertebrae is uh, directly in line with the uh, center line between the two feet still so he's kept his head very steady and he's flailing the club around this this central hub in this position his shoulders are on the correct tilt to pirouette around so that it will support a full and complete release of the club head this is the only position uh, that will support a free and full release of the club from the top of the swing and let's take a look at that that's my last point here as he brings the club up he does not point the club in a straight line he lets it recock so by the time he is at about 130 the club shaft is forming about a 65 70 degree angle uh, with his right forearm um, not quite as much as Mike Austin was. He liked to be 90 degrees by here, which would be right here. So that you can see that the club in the Mike Austin swing would have advanced another 6 to 8 inches by this point, which is why he got so much extra speed over anybody else. But Fred Couples is not that far behind and this is the reason all these things together are the reason he was able to swing well into the uh, above the 120 mile an hour range and make it look just so effortless um, when you ask people who they you'd like to, they'd like to swing like a lot of them would always say Fred Couples because he looks like he's swinging so smoothly and effortly effortlessly but there's so much speed in this swing because there's just so much leverage this is what a golf swing should look like from face on is um, you know effortless power supple quickness just like Mike would have wanted us to have so copy those four points and swing more like Fred Couples and you'll find yourself using less effort because you're getting proportionately more leverage. Um, this is Steve signing off for now. I uh, will uh, see you tomorrow.